uh, it's uh, probably been about two weeks since I did my last video on my mugs, but I've been really busy getting ready for this for this show, and it was a great success. Uh, and I got to meet some of my viewers. Uh, a few of you guys came down to see what was going on. I, I hope you enjoyed that show. That was a really good show. The uh, the lady that organizes that show is very good and very meticulous and uh, she handpicks each vendor that's in there and uh, she's just great but anyway the show went really well uh, but now that show's over I've got to get on to some projects that I've been putting off uh, while I was getting ready for it so uh, my wonderful little daughter-in-law is about to have my first grandchild and uh, that's uh, next month and I'm really excited about about meeting my my granddaughter but uh, uh, she asked me if I would build her a blanket ladder okay I know uh, a blanket ladder there's all kinds of them on YouTube but uh, uh, I'm gonna do this one a little bit different not much but I'm, I'm excited about building it just you know because it's something for her and uh, so anyway if you want to see how I'm going to build a blanket ladder you know may not be the right way but it's the oval way uh, I'm going to get started on that right now and what I'm going to be using is the uh, select pine from uh, from the Home Depot it's really nice straight lumber and it's pretty tight grained. It's been it's been jointed and planed really nice. So that's going to be my rails, and I'm going to use uh, inch and a quarter dowels for my for my uh, rungs. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, getting started off. <clears throat> I decided to give my ladder 10 degrees of lean so I just used the protractor on my speed square to get 10 degrees it's very important you get the bottom and the top parallel 10 degrees at the bottom 10 degrees at the top I've marked the back and I know that <clears throat> I'm gonna have to cut a line that will come sh straight down the wall and that's very easy to do. I decided to uh, to start at the, the center. And that's what I'm marking off here. Just marking off the center of my cut line. And if all I do is come down 90 degrees off of that toward on the back side. So you go to the back side and you draw a line 90 degrees to that and that and that will stand perfect up against your wall uh, in relation to whatever angle you have on the top and the bottom. I'm getting ready to lay out my my rungs and I'm putting them uh, I decided to put my rungs 14 inches apart and that gives me five rungs so I'm just marking them on the side and I will come back and mark them with my speed square. Or my, yeah, my speed square. I'm just marking the centers here where the, where the rungs are. <clears throat> and, uh, and I'll get ready to drill. I'll just drill little, basically guide holes uh, over at the drill press after well <laughs> I forgot I'm gonna double side tape both of them together make sure that you've got the insides correct uh, because one the uh, the uh, the guide that I have with all my marks on is on the very top so I can see everything. 
Got everything lined up good. Make sure the glue that the uh, tape is stuck down really well. And then we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut our angles. And since my shop is so small, I can't get it on the table saw. Uh, I'm having to use the circular saw, which is just fine. I'm still cutting both of them exactly alike because they are taped together. You could possibly use clamps for this, no problem. So I've cut the top and the bottom and now I just need to cut my long cut. <clears throat> A long cut right here and this is very it's very simple to lay this out just remember that this line is 90 degrees from the from the top there we go all right now all my lines are cut now I just need to get my pilot holes drilled or my guide holes my guide holes drilled <clears throat> And I'm just using an eighth inch bit <clears throat> because my sixteenth bit wasn't uh, long enough. But an eighth inch bit will punch all the way through both boards. And this ensures that my Forstner bit and my countersink will be the same. Now before I take the boards apart, I'm going to put a carpenter's triangle on here just to make sure I keep my orientation right and we'll break this thing apart that glue is or that tape is very strong now i'm using my forstner bit on the inside of of both boards on the two boards that are actually facing each other and i'm drilling down three eighths of an inch which is halfway through this board and i've set my depth stop to stop it at three eighths inch so I'm just drilling all my rung holes with this Forstner bit. Then I'll just take a can and kind of round over the top and just mark that off uh, because I just want it rounded. And I'll take it to the sander and sand that down. This works really well. Just use your sander to, to do this with. Because I will be sanding the entire piece again anyway. Then I go to my router. I've got a quarter inch round over bit here. And I try to do the end grain first. And I will do all sides except for the ver except for the very bottom where the basically where the foot is. And I'll leave that square. But I'll do all four, all four sides of this and just round the whole thing over. Don't want my little granddaughter to, to get hurt if she falls on it or something. Okay, now we're just going to cut our rungs. And I cut these rungs at 18 inches. But you could cut them any length you want. I'm doing this because it's for, it's for a baby. And... Uh, I'm doing it 18 inches because it's for a baby uh, and baby blankets. But if if you're building this for somebody who, say, does quilts or something like that, you may want to go up to maybe even up to 24 inches. And like I said, this is an inch and, inch and one quarter dowel. Now we're going to start sanding everything, and I'm going to sand everything to 320 grit. Uh, I'll use my my sander to get all the flat areas and then I'll hand sand the edges. But I want everything sanded to 320 grit. Uh, I'm about to stain this thing. I, I don't want it too smooth because then it doesn't take the stain as well. But yeah, I'm just uh, sanding everything by hand including the very bottom where it'll contact the floor. Sand all the rungs up to 320. And don't forget, if you can see that one dowel there, it's got a sticker on it. 
all all of all the big box stores put those blooming stickers you've really got to make sure you get that off uh, or else your stain won't take now I'm, I'm just getting ready to glue in my rungs so I'm uh, applying glue into my mortises I, I don't want any glue outside that mortise uh, because it will not take stain if it's if it's had glue there if you don't clean it off good enough and I always think there always seems to be one or two spots where I didn't get the glue good enough uh, cleaned off good enough or sanded good enough and it, you know it just doesn't take stain and it looks awful so here I am getting getting the rungs put in one side I, I want to make sure that I get it driven all the way all the way down contacting the, the bottom this one this right here will make these rungs very very strong but we're gonna back them up with screws too right now I'm on working on the other side and it's pretty easy you just start at one end and you just make sure that you get them all in the holes or lined up in the holes just work your way down there we go right, right there now we just start hammering it in and I will have to come back uh, this wooden mallet did kind of mar it just a little bit so I had to come back and sand that face again now I'm countersinking I'm using a a pilot bit with a countersink and I'm just barely countersinking it enough to make the screws flush with the outside And then we drive our screws. I'm using inch and a quarter screws. And drive them down, flush with the t flush with the wood, or flush with the surface. This will help hold everything together until the glue gets dry. And then uh, I'm going to start using my stencils. I decided to use a couple of flower stencils. And these will be kind of at the top of the of the ladder, but uh, they're just the three inch by four inch, I think, stencils. And uh, I thought it would look nice, so I'm gonna draw draw out the design with my pencil, and I'll I'll burn it with my wood burner. All right, now I'm getting ready to put some letters on here because I wanted to kind of monogram these uh, just below the flowers. So I'll, I'll mark a straight line across, a square line, and I'll find the center of the board. And mark the center, and that way I know uh, where to start. I'm just using my letters. Uh, stencil letters and I uh, generally get all my stencils at like Hobby Lobby but I found these letters at Walmart they have uh, several different they had several different types but I'll just trace these letters out and one side will have my daughter-in-law's initials and the other side will have my granddaughter's initials now I'm just using my wood burner with like a chisel tip just to follow those lines and burn those lines in. And I'm not a pyrographer, but I think this really turned out pretty nice. But I'll just trace off the entire flower. And I used a different flower on the other side. Uh, 
I think it looked uh, turned out pretty good. It's kind of hard to use a wood burner like this because it's uh, kind of awkward and it's hard to follow lines with it uh, because your hands are so far away from the, the thing. Now I've changed my tips. It's just a big old round tip that I'm using here and I'm just filling in the letters. Uh, some parts of the letters are thin, some parts of the letter are thick, so I try to fill in all the all the way to my lines. And and you know just to put their initials in. I really enjoyed this part uh, even though I was having to anchor my right hand with my left hand and it just it was tough but anyway now I'll just lightly sand over it to get any charring off the sides and here I put my first coat of stain which was American walnut stain and it uh, it turned out it was actually too light so I went back and used uh, dark walnut after this I didn't actually get that in the video but here I am staining and uh, I'll put stain over like one one upright and I'll come back with a clean paper towel and wipe it off to get it smoothed out and it doesn't look it doesn't look as blotchy and you can see those things you can see the stencils really get through it so now I'm getting ready to spray my first coat of satin polyurethane uh, I didn't want any like real shine on this I wanted it to uh, to look kind of old sort of not really old but but anyway that's why I'm using the stain <clears> of <throat> the uh, satin And it worked out really well. So I'll do three coats of this, sanding at 320 between each coat, and uh, and this thing will be ready to go uh, once this is cured up. It'll be good and ready to go. But just remember, you have to sand in between each coat with polyurethane. But it gives a rock hard finish and uh, it'll last practically forever. It's a very good uh, finish for woodwork. Okay, and here it is uh, after the third coat. I think it's looking pretty good and we're almost done we just got to let it cure well that's the end of my uh, blanket ladder project for my granddaughter <laughs> she will be with us next month very shortly and uh, you know my daughter-in-law asked me if I would make this for her. she got uh, you know she's got several blankets and uh, I'm, I told her of course you know but uh, she wanted it stained dark so I went with dark walnut dark walnut stain um, I've got a flower here that came from a stencil. Uh, I just drew it out and traced it with my wood burning kit. Not a pry pyrographer uh, by any means, but I think it looks pretty good anyway. And they've, uh, I've got their initials right here. I've got my granddaughter's initials here. And then on this flower is my daughter in law. Okay, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
a good solid polyurethane finish on the outside we won't have to worry about this thing bleeding through or anything like that uh, even you know polyurethane is very it's more scratch resistant than say uh, lacquer or something else but it's got a good polyurethane finish on it so uh, yeah well uh, I think I think my granddaughter is gonna love this I just hope she don't try climbing on it <laughs> until she gets old enough it'll hold her I'm sure it would but uh, but we'll have to look into that and make sure she don't try to climb it but this is where all her blankets are going and I hope you guys enjoyed this project and uh, we'll see y'all down the road